Hello everyone, welcome once again to our podcast, another episode of If I Can, You Can. So I have with me an interesting guest, her name is Sophia Olayinka, she's a graduate of economics from the University of Lagos. She has over eight years of experience in taxation from Deloitte, and she's currently the taxation manager at Deloitte Nigeria. Please make welcome our guest, Mrs. Sophia Olayinka. Welcome, Ms. Sophia. Thank you very much, Titilope. Um, so, thank you. So, today, um, we'll have you tell us about your ICANN journey, the challenges you faced, how you overcame it, and basically your experience like as, as an ICANN um, student and your, your success story, basically. So, over to you. Okay, thank you very much. And I really appreciate the platform for giving me an opportunity to motivate younger ones on this ICANN career. Okay, so not to beat around the bush, I started my ICANN journey while I was in the university, 200 level to be precise. Then there used to be a program for people that have your um, end SSE, um, that's your first secondary school certificate um, certification. So you didn't need to finish your BSc before you could be an ICANN student. So I opted for that. While in the university, I started my ATS classes. Then it used to be ATS one, two, three. And um, I was combining both that and um, school together that's my bsc so for me um one of the challenges i had then was because i had in mind that in as much as i wanted this i can qualification as you said i'm a graduate of economics i also knew that the labor market it's always favored towards people that add to one and above. So I had to juggle mm-hmm. it to ensure that I excelled at both ends and nothing so far. So that was one of the challenges. Yeah. Did you fail any course at any point? Did I fail any course? Like like any, any of point? the icon, yeah. Or you were just you just stainless <laughs> or true. <laughs> So the special grace of God, I never failed any stage. Wow. Um, I did all, all through. I never failed. Even my ATS two and ATS three, mm-hmm. I had icon prizes. Wow. I even for ATS two best qualifying female best, even ATS three and and the likes like that, and. For me, I think what helped me with this um, kind of results was I was in Lasso. So, you know, they said not every every disappointment is a blessing. How do they say that? So most of the times when we want to do our ICANN exam, I realize that either Lasso is on strike or <laughs> <laughs> there's always an... Or I, had, or I always had that time to just crash with and okay. prepare for the exam yes so thank god for for wow. good thank god for the strike <laughs> no no not the strike for his message <laughs> okay so what what would you say um as being your drive i mean for for people i, I know it, it could be difficult to juggle both school work and i can together that's aside the fact that yes yeah, the strike was a blessing you know but then what will you say as um like as being your drive? What has kept you going? What what kept you at your best um in every stage? Okay, so for me then, when I when I was in secondary school, I didn't know the difference between being an accountant and being a chartered accountant. So when people ask me what I wanted to be, I would say I, I wanted to be a chartered accountant. So I thought by putting in for accountancy in the university level, you, there's automatically, maybe I will just become a chartered accountant. The like accountant. That. <laughs> yeah, so when I did my post-UME, I actually registered for accountancy, but 
my post UME grades were not so wasn't so good, so okay. I couldn't get the accounting admission. So I had a second chance to do it again, and because there was opportunity in economics, that was when Anna had the opportunity to find out that this accountancy that you are saying you want to be a chartered accountant, it is not by you doing accountancy. You have to be a member of ICANN. So me I can. registering for economics does not stop me being a chartered accountant. So with that in mind, so it's a goal that has always been, that I've always said for myself that I wanted to be. So maybe that prodded me to push to be better at every point in time. That's one. The second thing is finances. I, yes, I thank God, I, um, my family, when it comes to finances, they actually contributed to the ICANN journey, but I knew that I'm um, with my siblings and the responsibilities, this was like mm -hmm. a strain on their finances. So if I was going to be getting it, I had to make the best out of it. So mm -hmm. I knew, yes, so I knew that I just had to do my best so that they would be motivated to keep on to support you to support support me and thankfully when i started getting the prizes i didn't have to be paying for tuition centers again the only money i had to mm. look for there was just exam fees so exam. that helped me and me being able to do that ats really helped my professional exams because i didn't have a course to really attend lectures for the professional stages because um, I really took my time with the ATS classes. Yeah, ATS of the low background. Um, yes, so, yes, yeah, so mostly when you're not going to professional, then it's just like just what you've done in eight years, then they just mm -hmm. put a more advance. professional touch and advancement on mm -hmm. it, so that's it. Wow, that's, that's awesome. So um, in, in your, first of all, congrats on your promotion to becoming um, the tax manager at Deloitte. Um, but then I would like to ask you, like, why tax? Because most of your, all of your experience basically has been in tax, eight years experience in tax. Like, why tax? Okay, so for me, after school, I qualified, before I even got my BSc certificate, I was already a chartered accountant. So I think that also helped my CV. So after school, I got a job with um, a registrar and I was in the accounting unit as an accounting officer. But given the type of job functions and job roles I performed, I knew that this was not me. I, I knew that was better than that. So I applied to Deloitte okay. for a role. I that at that time, to be sincere, I didn't know what the difference was between and yeah, between because in Deloitte you have like different functions, Deloitte um, tax, audit, consulting, advisory. financial advisory, risk advisory. So as at that time, I just said I wanted to work with Deloitte because it was it is one of the foremost professional services firm in the world and Nigeria to be precise. So I just wanted to work with Deloitte. So when the opportunity came for the, in, so the test is a general test. Everybody writes it. Either you're going to or the financial, you do the test. So I passed. Mm -hmm. So by the time there was an opening for interview, I was already working and he said it was for tax. I just said, whatever it is, I'm getting into this place. Mm -hmm. So I did the interview and I came in as a tax associate back in 2013 and when i got into the tax function i realized that well it's not so bad tax is just a part of accounting the accounting mm -hmm. profession financial ac accounts and all so it's just a part and it was then and i realized that tax is very broad it is beyond the 30 percent of profits or mm -hmm. whatever it is it is very broad and i went into and i fell in love with it so more so, once you are, yes, there's opportunity to always change functions sometimes, but I just feel that this is another area to build my career and I can own my space here. That's why I, I, I stayed. Yeah. Wow, interesting. So, how yeah. has I can, how have I can benefited you personally and professionally? Okay, so as I said earlier, 
I think having that certification on my CV helped open a lot of doors in the beginning of my career. So even all the jobs that uh, jobs I wanted to that I applied for, even as for internship and all, once they see that ah, you chartered accountant, then even without them knowing you, they want to hear you out. And because you are also able to demonstrate that you have that capacity being a chartered accountant there is that always that opportunity for you so for me i think i can open a lot of those because for deloitte yes they also employ people that do not have qualifications but you are expected to write the exams so for me because i already had the qualifications it helped me settle into the work fully so i didn't have to be thinking about writing exams again while working because it can be very tasking juggling yeah. the two that is work and um, an exam and exams so i think doing it gave me a pedestal to work on or to for a smooth a smooth selling opportunity better still so that's that's what i how i think i am i can has helped my career oh, yeah. how, how about personally yeah. Okay, so personally too, so once there's career, there's always financial motivation. So mm. if I'm to take it to financial financial um, implications as an as an associate or an employee of Deloitte, even the mm. salary you earn as a qualified or a chartered person is different from that of someone that is not qualified if you're on the same level. So at the earlier stages, on it helped me save. Then later stages, last like last year, on a personal note, I just felt I'd I've been qualified since 2010. That's a long time. That why don't I brushing up my knowledge of this accounting profession? Meanwhile, one way doing I can it was IAS and like now you have IFRS and like so mm-hmm. I registered for my. ACC because I had my ICANN qualifications, I didn't have to go through the rigors of starting all over again. I just had to write four papers in the mm-hmm. professional level, which I also cleared. Wow. Once that was last year, so that's the personal goal for me. I don't need it for my career. I don't need it. It's just a mm-hmm. personal that let me have this also. Yeah. Wow, that's that's interesting. So yeah. um. Before I let you go, I I would just like to ask, like, what would be your word for those who are trying to navigate like the accounting career, those who are writing ICANN exams, maybe they failed, maybe they have um challenges, finance, financial challenges, or um maybe time, a very tight schedule, like what would be your word to them to keep them going, like to get to the end of this ICANN? Okay. So is I just have one thing to tell them, and that is their mind is their greatest asset. So whatever you set your mind to do and you are committed to doing it, once your mind is made up that you are going to achieve it. So the greatest battles are won in the mind. It don't have to, mm-hmm. before you start talking about physical and financial and all, you have mm-hmm. to start with the mind. So I'll use the little example of the ACC I just mentioned. That was, I, I wrote um, I, I wrote my first paper in September 2019. As I said, I was to write four papers. So I set my mind to it that if I was going to write four, I was going to write it quarterly. September diet, December diet, and March diet. Mm. While I was writing these exams as you as you rightly said you said mrs i have two children i have, I have two children i have to take care of the home front i have wow. a job that demands close to 10 hours from me i get to the office i leave my house six o'clock because of lagos traffic i get mm-hmm. to the office seven and i'm most times not leaving the office till 9 30 10. Yeah. i have job deliverables that i have to also attend to 
And between that September and March is always, always our busy period. So what I'm trying mm-hmm. to point out there is that, yes, I had registered for ACC maybe since 2018. I was saying I'll push it, I'll push it out. I realized that mm-hmm. there's never a good time to do anything except you just mm-hmm. have to start. So while yeah. I had all these things going on for me, or going on for me, I set up my mind that this was what I was going to achieve. I'm not going to go into the nitty-gritty of all the things I had to do to ensure that I also passed the exam while also not dropping the ball at work. But I yeah. had to make these sacrifices because my mind was set up to do it. Right. Yes, so I get to the office, read in the morning, do my job, try to read at night before I leave the office. It's because in my mind, I just knew that I had just this one chance to do it and how to mm. do it well. So I'm not saying that after putting your mind to doing it and the result doesn't come out the way it is, that means mm-hmm. you've not done well. No. It's just for you to recondition your mind that the people that have done it do not mm-hmm. have more than one head. And mm-hmm. if they can do it, you can also do it. So that is what I would leave for the people that are writing their I can exams. Because one wow. day, by the time you get your certification, nobody mm-hmm. will ask how many times you wrote the exams. Exactly. Are you qualified? <laughs> yes. Is she qualified? Yes. Yeah. And that is it. Hmm. That, that's really amazing. So the greatest um, battle that we have, that, that, that anybody has on, on any path that they decide to go for is in their mind. So they have is to in the mind. You have to, we have to win battle from your mind. mind. Yeah, yes, first. Before you now that put in financial, physical resources, and or any other things. Thing. Yes, into it. You just have to wow. make up your mind that this is what it is. Wow. So anybody can actually succeed at the ICANN examination. They just anybody. Have to I have my colleagues that are engineers, quantity surveyors, provided you are working in Deloitte, you're expected to write the exam. So, and yes. if they can pass it, and you are, if you are, Right, and I can, and you are also in the social social sciences or management mm-hmm. sciences field. Then it's even easier for you to pass it. But what I just tried to say is, I even have medical doctors, lawyers that also mm-hmm. have this qualification. So yeah, sure. it's just if they can do it, you can do it. You yes, do. it's going to take a lot of sacrifices. It will take a lot of. You may not have friends. You may take your friends away from you. <laughs> it may not. It may take your social life away from you. But you always have it back if mm. the time when the time is right. Yeah. Right. So that's wow. It. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, um, Alainka, for this interesting and insightful session. I'm sure a lot of our listeners have learned a whole lot, and they are pumped up to that for those who have given up to start again, and for those who are writing to keep the fire going on. Thank you so much. Thank you. So for thank those listening to us, if you've not subscribed, thank you. So for those listening to us for the first time, kindly subscribe to our YouTube channel, I can online tutors, and then follow us on Anchor as well. Anchor FM, I can online tutors. See you next time. Thank you so much, Madam Olainka. Thank it's you. It's a pleasure Bye. having you. Thank Bye. you. Same here.